So uh, welcome everyone for joining this session. I think we start because it's uh, it's quarter to uh, four in in the afternoon in the Netherlands, but uh, it's not a, in other time zones. It's it's another time, but uh, it's a quarter to the hour. So my name is Marion Wittenberg. I'm service manager of Dataverse NL in the Netherlands, and I'm the chair of the session. This session this session is about flexible metadata support in Dataverse. Follow up, following upon our discussions at the Data First community meeting last year, we will present and discuss ongoing efforts and future ideas for improving the fair support of the Data First software, focusing on metadata schemas and controlled vocabularies. The speakers will address important issues like interoperability, compliance with metadata standards, integration with external services, and the maintenance and sustainability of flexible metadata support. After each presentation, you can ask questions in the chat, and we also try to answer the questions raised in the Google document shared with you before. We don't have breakout groups, so I would like to have the presentation centrally. Uh, but let's introduce the speakers to you first. The first presentation is held by Philip Consett and John Grable. Philip Consett is a senior research librarian at the Arctic University of Norway in Tromsø, and he's part of the repository management of, the, of Dataverse NO and of Trolling, the Tromsø repository of language and linguistics. He has been active in the Dataverse community since 2015. John Grable is a technical program manager of the CEDAR and BioPortal projects at Stanford University Center for Biomedical and Informatics Research. He is co-chair of the RDA Vocabulary and Semantic Services Interest Group and has a whole lot of background in metadata and semantics. The second part of the session, we will listen to Slava Tikhanov and Jim Marius. Slava Tikhanov is lead R&D engineer at Dans in the Netherlands and he is lead developer of the Dataverse task within the European Shock Project, coordinating the technical collaboration between European partners for, adapt for adapting Dataverse to the needs of the European social science and humanities research infrastructures. He has been active in the, in the Dataverse community since 2015. Jim Myers is a contractor working as a senior developer and architect for the Global Dataverse Community Consortium. He has been active in the community since 2018. So I would like uh, to ask Philip, the floor is to you and uh, start your presentation, please. Yeah, thank you, Marion. Just let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Great. Um, just let me start my presentation. Yeah, so uh, we're going to talk about the uh, uh, metadata schema support in in Dataverse in the Dataverse software. First, first an introduction and uh, something about current work on improvements, and then some ideas about how to further enhance metadata schema support. So first, just let me briefly um, uh, recap some of the stuff we have been we discussed last year at the Dataverse community meeting. Uh, I, in this in the metadata session, I did a, a brief summary of desirable properties of metadata support in Dataverse uh, in the Dataverse software based on GitHub issues, basically. So here is uh, some are some examples of that um, presentation. So uh, ideally, we want uh, that the metadata in in, in Dataverse covers as many uh, subjects or domains as relevant for the community. And we, of course, also want the metadata to be compliant with standards. And um, we want the, the values in the metadata fields uh, to be determined by external controlled and standardized vocabularies. So uh, Slav and Jim are going to talk about that. And also we want, to, we want it to be possible that metadata schemas allow seamless integration with external tools and services. So. This is how um, metadata schema support currently works in Dataverse. It's, it's um, metadata schemas are defined in TSV files. Um, so the general metadata schema, which is called citation metadata and a few domain specific metadata schemas are shipped with, with the main distribution of the Dataverse software. And, and also customized schemas can be uploaded by repository admins as, as TSV files. Here are two examples of customized metadata schemas being uh, developed in the community. 
The first one is the SESTA metadata model. Uh, this is uh, um, um, developed by uh, SESTA, uh, the Consortium of European Social Science Data Archives. And the uh, objective is to standardize metadata for, for SESTA service providers. Um, yeah, so uh, DANS uh, is working uh, within the, the shock project, which you have probably heard about on, on implementing this metadata uh, model in the Dataverse software. And another uh, use case is the component metadata infrastructure or CMDI or SIMD, and which is developed by Clarin, which is another European uh, um, research infrastructure uh, uh, within linguistics and language. Uh, CMD is not a, a, a standard, but it's it's a framework for describing and reusing metadata blueprints. And also uh, this um, uh, framework or model uh, is being uh, implemented by uh, uh, DONS and also by my university within the SHOCK project. So this will be implemented in, in the Dataverse software. And now turning to some uh, ideas or maybe preliminary ideas about how to further enhance metadata schema support in, in the Dataverse software. Uh, first, um, you may ask why we need to enhance or why we should enhance metadata support uh, in, in Dataverse. Uh, I think there are two reasons for that. It would make metadata used in, in the Dataverse software more interoperable and it would also make the metadata um, uh, it would also make the metadata support in, in Dataverse more sustainable. So, for instance, you can imagine a situation where you have uh, biology uh, metadata uh, in, uh, implemented in repository one based on no standard, and uh, my biology metadata also based on no standard implemented in repository uh, B. So this is, gives us high flexibility but low interoperability. And uh, uh, an improvement from that stage is when you have a, a metadata um, 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 uh, biology metadata uh, implemented based on a st st standard, for instance, Darwin Core in, in repository one, one, and also based on Darwin Core in repository B. Uh, but the, the standards could still be implemented in different ways. So this is slightly more interoperable, uh, uh, but it's, it's not quite... Um, um, yeah, it's it's not high interoperability, so there still could be um, differences between the, the two implementations. And another issue is the sustainability. I think it's it's very important to uh, to be possible to integrate uh, the way metadata is managed in in the in the data software with other tools uh, within the entire life cycle of research data and also metadata management. Uh, so to achieve a higher interoperability and sustainability, I think we could achieve this uh, in two ways or at, in two stages. So we could start working in two stages. Stage one is still based on TSV files. Uh, so we could include requested metadata schemas as TSV files shipped within the main distribution of data Dataverse software. And at stage three, we could uh, have a look at how we could integrate uh, metadata support in Dataverse with external tools, for instance, uh, with uh, CDR. So at stage one, this would mean that uh, we would then have to um, agree, on, uh, and agree on and include more domain-specific schemas, for instance, for linguistics or biology or whatever, and, and to ship them with the main distribution so that they would be implemented in the same way in all uh, repositories. Um, so why should we go beyond this stage? Um, I think the TSV approach has some limitations. For instance, when we deal with hierarchical or more complex metadata standards, and also when we want to integrate with tools in the active phase of metadata management. Uh, so this is an example about um, uh, um, quite a complex uh, metadata uh, standard that I have been um, implementing. So what kind of other ways are there to support metadata standards in, in Dataverse? Uh, as I said, a CDR integration could be an idea. So there are basically two types of metadata schemes in Dataverse. We have standard schemas that are shipped with the main distribution and customized schemas that are created by Dataverse installations. Uh, 
So we could define and maintain the data risk standard and customize metadata schemas as a so-called CDAR templates, which John will tell us more about. Um, and we could then get metadata into data risk through either uh, or both through registration in an integrated way with a CDAR template or also by just uploading a CDAR metadata file. So this could look like this. So uh, uh, we would then here, here either have an integrated way to register metadata or just upload a file, a metadata file into the Dataverse. So I think um, this would make it uh, more, uh, the metadata support more uh, interoperable and also more sustainable. So I'll leave now the word to uh, John to tell us more about uh, Cedar. All right, thank you very much. And I will do my best sharing impression. Um, it's great to have everybody uh, here for this. It's This is highly compressed. That was a great introduction to it. Uh, are you seeing my screen okay? We're, yeah. seeing, the, we're seeing the slides. Excellent. They're loading now, yeah, great. Great, perfect. So, um, Cedar is a system that really is supporting end-to-end -end metadata development, including the development of the specifications. Uh, if you want to read more about it, uh, you can go to the metadatacenter.org slash references link that's at the bottom of this slide, and you will see many different kinds of uh, references about Cedar. It's a very well-documented program. Uh, it's If you look at it uh, as a user, you might say it's just a form filler program, and that is true. It can certainly do that, but there are quite a few considerations that went into Cedar's development. It is uh, it provides the available tooling to work with the metadata as a community, and so uh, that ends up being very powerful for sharing and collaboration. It supports semantics uh, in a native way. It understands semantics and uh, can create linked data identifiers for all the concepts. It uh, provides a powerful, uh, mature and flexible metadata specification system. And the metadata specification itself is very well thought through um, with hierarchy and semantics. And the metadata specifications are, are reusable. They can be produced in modular ways and can be designated as trusted. So you could have a Dataverse approved set of metadata fields or a set of metadata elements or templates themselves. So these are powerful considerations that I think help help uh, would help Dataverse in this kind of environment. Um, the, the flow here is that a template uh, specifier creates a uh, specification using the template designer. Think of it as a form builder um, that uh, you can just use drag and drop. Research scientists then will immediately be able to fill out metadata according to the template that you've just designed. And all of this is managed in a, in a resource manager that we'll take a look at the screen of in a second, it's like Google Docs. Um, so uh, Cedar is composable, as I mentioned, and, and has a couple of different icons you see in the workspace, but uh, you can think of the, the box as a template field, a single question, essentially. And then the group of boxes is a group of those fields um, that lets you compose, as I mentioned earlier. The metadata template is the thing that becomes a form. Um, for someone to fill out, and that produces the instantiated metadata. So all of that composes its, its JSON schema uh, based for the templates, and then the produced metadata instances are in JSON-LD. And the, uh, as I mentioned, the model specifications are very well documented, and um, so it's, it's very precise in that way. This is what your home home page might look like in Cedar or a, full, a particular folder. Uh, this would be the Meyer folder, for example, for a Meyer specification. And uh, so you can see the different metadata types here. And if we open up one of these um, uh, metadata instances, uh, you might see something like we saw earlier. Um, but if we uh, want to do something more interesting, like create a template, then we can do that. 
And we might start by creating a date element. Uh, and so that's relative, it's just filling out a form to create the form, it's not too tricky. Um, but then you might wanna add the whole module from somebody else. And I skipped a step to just show you what it looks like after you've entered a whole module that somebody else has created or that you've created, um, makes it composable. Um, or returning to that, you might add a, a text field and that's where the semantics comes into play is, is when you add a text field, you have the ability to hit the search button uh, and bring in values from other sources. And so this shows what it looks like after, but I'll just show you the, the before. When you click on that button, it is bringing up a window that is uh, showing data that's from the BioPortal system. On the fly, it's creating a, a list of all the terms in BioPortal that might match the disease uh, uh, search um, in some way. And when you pick one of those, you can click on a show details button at the upper right here. And uh, that will uh, bring up all the details we see in the lower part of this slide, including the hierarchy of terms. Uh, and in this particular case, uh, it being uh, the disease ontology, um, they're all diseases. And that means when you scroll down a little, you can see that uh, the branch selection is available. So you could actually choose all the things within this branch, or you could choose all the things within this ontology, um, or you could just choose a particular term and start adding individual terms together. So it's a highly composable set of responses uh, for, a, for a field. And if you wanted to, you can add your own set of responses to BioPortal simply by adding a SCOS vocabulary. And we have a nice pipeline now for, for doing that uh, in a fairly simple way. It's very easy to maintain out of GitHub and, and works very well. So the whole thing is, is packaged with APIs. Um, it, it's built around uh, REST APIs and uh, those are accessible to users with the appropriate authentication. Um, and so with Cedar, you can have your basic workflow that just includes the, the Cedar component um, and, and keep all your metadata in Cedar and that's fine. Um, or you can choose to uh, export your metadata to another system or pull your metadata from Cedar to another system. And uh, in the case of Lynx, for example, they had their whole data submission tool that interoperates with Cedar as a front end and pulls the metadata immediately after it's created to show it in the Cedar, uh, to show it in the Lynx front end. So uh, and there's some cool videos about, I think they're cool anyway. And there are more complicated workflows we built uh, to connect with NCBI, uh, for example, sorry, uh, National Center for Bioinformatics. No, that's not it. Anyway, it's one of the major uh, repository collections in the United States for biomedical uh, assets. And so we interface closely with that. Um, and you have sharing capabilities so that people can see your the things you want them to see and not see the things you don't want them to see. Uh, and uh, whole teams of people can be set up around that. So it's a very rich system. Uh, it's very well um, uh, used at this point. It has over 2000 users and a whole lot of assets, including a lot of uh, common data elements from um, the biomedical community. Uh, so you have, uh, I think, a lot of opportunities to put Cedar into a framework that can be very generic yet specialized for the particular applications you'd like to use it for. And I'll stop there. Not that I couldn't talk more. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Philip and, um, and John. Are there any questions? I don't see any questions yet in the chat. Please put the questions in the chat or you can ask for uh, to for unmute, then you can also um, speak. Is everything totally clear to everyone? Or is it? No questions. Either that was the best presentation I ever gave or it was too fast. <laughs> well, yeah, I heard any of it. Amber's got a question, Marion, uh, in the chat, yeah. a couple in there now. Ah. Um, 
uh, a question from Amber. How is the interoperability facil facilitate in this workflow system? It is uh, a principal way in which it's facilitated in, is that the uh, uh, template specification itself is open, of course, and is defined in a way uh, with JSON that you can that that programmers easily can use it interface with it do transformations against it uh many have have either created metadata themselves following the specification and submitted it to cedar or created templates uh in an automated way from other um uh, templating information that they had in their systems so there's a lot of just programming interoperability and then the semantic aspects of it uh, uh make the uh specification of the terminologies of the answers uh, and of the fields themselves very uh, computable and precise so when users are uh, filling out their form and entering a value for disease they're just putting pulling up a drop down or an autocomplete whatever they want to do but the but the end product is uh, that they are getting a precise specification of a unique identifier in a controlled terminology system that can, where that term, that term can be mapped to other terms and so on. So there's a very, it, it uses a whole framework for semantic interoperability that is very well developed and very heavily used. If I may add something to Amber's uh, question, I think yep. maybe, maybe it also was about, about how uh, this could increase interoperability together with Dataverse. I think it, I mean, if we could integrate Dataverse with a tool that is also used to register metadata in the active phase, but also by other tools. So I think it could then make it, make it uh, a kind of more interoperable in the way that the, the earlier you start registering metadata, it, the easier it would be to, to um, deposit and, and um, publish your research data exactly right and and so we are in several uh demonstrations or programs right now in which including with welcome trust in which we are demonstrating how making cedar a part of the metadata entry process from the time of award uh and and letting people start to capture their model their metadata and then capture it right away in the award making process can carry all the way through the presentation of the of the data uh, and and publication of the data in external systems and make that metadata highly reusable throughout the whole process in the case of dataverse uh, i one thing that i would imagine would be really attractive is that you get um if you're using cedar as your underlying framework then or the cedar uh, specification then all the different data verses uh, while they're producing metadata that is about different topics can have underlying metadata structure that is identical and interchangeable and so they could in, in essence understand each other's metadata which is is quite an interesting prospect thank you the next question is from Roxanne Wijns from the uh, University of Leuven in Belgium. Uh, she says, a nice tool, but how open is it? Can anyone around the world use it? Is it, is it open, freely available or? Yes, it's, it's open source. It's the, the service that's provided at Stanford is wide open. Uh, so anyone can go there now and play with it. Uh, it would be cedar.metadatacenter.org. Um, and uh, that's center in the US way not in the British way. And uh, so uh, there, there are no constraints right now on its use. Um, at some point, we might have to spin some out if it gets too popular or something, but um, entirely open. Hmm. Um... It's at, at SCOS is also used for mapping between for, the, the, this question is from Steen. Um, SCOS is also used for mapping between vocabularies. Is that mapping part of this or just selection of terms and their hierarchies? So the mapping is not embedded in Cedar yet, other than uh, when you're doing a search um, for terms to use Bioportal uh, is kind of smart about it can use synonyms in figuring out what it wants to present to you um, but um, the expectation as we go forward is that we will begin adding more and more sophistication 
within Cedar and as external tooling to take advantage of the fact that you have well-specified semantic concepts in your metadata. And now you can actually do post hoc mapping using the mappings that are in BioPortal or elsewhere. Um, and then the next question is from Dimitri Scabo, if I pronounce it correctly. And the first is, is, is a big applause. And then second, <laughs> apart from the template you mentioned for biomedical, are there already bases for other domains or should they be implemented by the various teams? So um, a lot of the initial use is biomedical. There are some, even the biomedical uh, uh, CDEs uh, fields, those are, uh, we have about 60,000 of them and, and some number of them are more generic uh, because you find that popping up. But um, we have a lot of usage that is not biomedical. It's, it's being adopted in the earth science communities as well. At this moment, if you were to go in tomorrow and try and create a complex uh, template um, or a rich template, uh, I would say you can anticipate creating um, uh, your own variations. But for example, um, we've just had a template put in for generic, called a generic metadata, um, sorry, generic data set metadata template that's intended to be a, a nice sort of standardized way for describing data sets. And so um, you are starting to see those kinds of templates and elements, and you may find things that are a very good fit for what you want that you can use or adopt. I combine the next two questions because of the time, but uh, uh, Vladimir asked, do you mark some already created metadata schema as an official metadata schema for some scientific areas? Um, we have just uh, released about three days ago a feature called Trusted Artifacts. And so with that, we will, our first use of that is going to be marking all of our CDE artifacts, the 60,000 from um, our uh, National Cancer Institute um, group, marking them as trusted. Um, and uh, the capability now is there to do that. The uh, adoption, it's a pretty new feature. And so the adoption is, is not quite there, but yes, that's going to be happening both by us, but by the communities themselves who will tell us we want to mark this or these artifacts as, as trusted. Um, we, we have a few, for instance, the AIR community, adaptive immune receptor repertoire community created a very rich metadata element and um, matching their specification. And that was an example of one that is an official metadata schema and advertised as such, yes. The next question is from uh, Dorothea. What would integration into Dataverse look like? API endpoints to upload SEDAR templates and then use them as a metadata blocks or use SEDAR as a front end and Dataverse as a back end? Um, I think uh, Philip will want to address this, but my uh, first observation, it obviously could be done in a number of different ways, depending on what you want to get out of it. And one feature I didn't mention is a tool that we've almost completed called the Embeddable Editor, which could be adopted as a front-end editor inside a, inside a uh, uh, Dataverse, uh, as a Dataverse component, web component, essentially, um, as an additional option. So a, a lot of I think that's for discussion. <laughs> Philip, do you want to add to that? Yeah, in fact, just may add, I mean, we are going to have a follow up meeting in, in, within the Dataverse metadata interest group. So these are details that we will be able to discuss later also. Yeah, I think because of the time, we can't answer every question, but I will. Uh, make a list of all the questions raised in, in, the, in the chat and also raised before in the Google Doc. And I will ask the presenters to, to answer these questions. And this will be sent to all the participants later so that to every question, there will be an, uh, an answer. I have a last question is from uh, Slava. Uh, is, uh, can you deploy this tool also in the cloud? Yes, and I'll answer additional questions on the chat uh, that we didn't get to. Um, yes, you can. Um, in principle, we have, have uh, been working with uh, the African group called Vodan to deploy it, um, for them to deploy it locally in their environment. Um, and so we haven't actually done all the final experiences of doing it ourselves on the cloud, but um, 
there's no reason we can think of that you can't. Thank you. Uh, there's a lot of discussion and a lot of questions, but I would like to move to the next uh, speaker because otherwise we run out of uh, of time. So uh, please, Slava, could you could you share your screen and uh, yeah, start your presentation? Okay, can you see something? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's coming. Okay, so uh, my name is Slava Tikhanov. I'm, I'm from dance and dance was mentioned a lot. We do a lot of uh, important things, I think, and hopefully we can change uh, the life of researchers uh, with usage of external control vocabularies. Okay, so first I should mention that our work was funded by Shock project and it's social sciences and humanities open cloud and we have a lot of partners in this collaboration and Basically, we are going to build uh, the functionality that it could be shared with uh, all uh, US projects and also worldwide. And it's open source and it's completely available for everyone. So before I will start my presentation, I also want to mention our big vision at DANCE. And DANCE is building a so-called data stations for different disciplines. And we have uh, projects, external projects that uh, we're using to support uh, our features, our functionality that we're developing for uh, common dataverse. Uh, we also have generic da dataverse on L as a generic repository for all researchers coming from different uh, disciplines. And we see dataverse as a uh, common technology that uh, will actually play key role for open innovation in Europe and in the world. So um, yesterday, no, yes, on, on Monday, I, uh, we had a really nice workshop on um, uh, DevOps issues. And I also um, explained how it works with your synergy uh, software quality as a service pipeline. And I really advise you to, to check what it is because it really allows to deploy something in the cloud. So um, about talking about uh, interoperability. So a few years ago, uh, AQSS team did evaluation, self-assessment of um, uh, fairness. And uh, uh, what they discovered uh, that for findable, accessible, and usable principles, data were scores really high. And unfortunately, there is weakness for interoperability because no external control vocabulary support and metadata schema is not flexible enough. And that's something we are going to fix in this project. So um, yeah, so yes, um, just a few minutes ago, um, Philip explained how it works with TSV files. And uh, basically you can download TSV file from spreadsheet that which is available online. And unfortunately it doesn't have uh, any possibility to uh, use external control vocabulary, vocabularies. Uh, what you can do, you can just put some control voc uh, vocabularies here in a custom metadata schema, download and put it in Dataverse and that's basically functionality that Dataverse has now. And also it means that uh, there is no possibility to uh, support multilingual interfaces. So of course uh, we want uh, to, uh, to, to fix these and we want to support most of um, control vocabularies, generic control vocabularies, and we want ORCID integration and grid geo names of course, mesh uh, and uh, Wikidata, all this stuff should be supported out, out of the box. And uh, everybody from Dataverse community and hopefully outside of our community also uh, should use this functionality. So uh, I already saw a lot of questions about scores and that's something we decided to use also. And uh, scores, uh, probably everybody knows what scores means, but just to mention that it has uh, preferred labels and alternative labels. And it has a few relationships like broader, narrow and related. And it allows us to uh, describe a different, uh, um, to, to, to link to, to different ontologies uh, and uh, reuse this functionality in, in a generic way. So uh, this is how it looks like in, in GRID database and GRID is global research identifier database. And uh, in this specific example, uh, this is something that we already connected to link to uh, affiliation field and people can just search for some um, institution name and they can link to uh, the institution names with uh, grid id so um, our task here is just to build some web interface that allow to do it uh, quickly and in easy way 
So um, we decided to use a framework uh, called Cosmos, and it's a, a software that was developed in Europe by National Library of Finland, and it already it's uh, it has a very active uh, global user community, and it allows to search and browse uh, through Cos concepts, and also it's very important it has multilingual vocabulary support, and it could be used for building different uh, use cases. And even more important that it has very uh, well defined uh, API specification that uh, we're using to connect uh, uh, this software to uh, Dataverse. So if you'll go to this link and it will be available afterwards, there is a Swagger open API specification and it allows to get access to any uh, concepts uh, just in, pro in machine to machine way. And this is example how uh, output from Cosmos looks like. It's just JSON, and uh, we decided to build application that uh, can read with JSON, and uh, it's integrated in with uh, Dataverse frontend to get all this information inside. Also, just to make it more uh, simple for uh, administrators, to, uh, we developed an uh, application that called Semantic Gateway, and uh, it's a very simple application that could be deployed next to uh, Dataverse and it allows people just to uh, create uh, links between uh, fields in Dataverse metadata schema and uh, uh, ontologies they want to use. Like in this example, uh, organization could be linked to grid. And uh, it's very easy to use, so you will just fill a uh, gateway URL and uh, uh, also a uh, Dataverse URL and um, you should use your API token from Super Administrator. And this application will update configuration inside of Dataverse and everything will be connected. So basically, uh, this is how it will look like after everything is um, configured. Uh, you will see uh, a few options for uh, vocabulary selection. And uh, for example, here you will see Tizawas, Grid, and Ag Agrivoc. And after you will select something, you're, you'll be able to search in a term. And you can select terms. and. Uh, Basically, after you will uh, select something, vocabulary URL will be filled in uh, Dataverse form. So this is very simple way. And uh, after we showed this, uh, um, uh, this demonstration to our French partners uh, from INRE, they told immediately, OK, so why only English? Why it's not possible to use uh, Dataverse language switch and to search in our language in French? And that's something we also implemented. So now. Uh, this language switch uh, allows to uh, search um, in different uh, languages, but still uh, term URL, uh, URL will be filled. It will be the same ter term URL in metadata. So uh, current situation in Dataverse, uh, it has three fields. And uh, what we started to discuss, how to add uh, another field, term URL, and uh, uh, for historical reasons, uh, it was uh, implemented in different way also, like vocabulary and vocabulary URL and uh, term itself. So um, in some, some cases, uh, this functionality was uh, uh, used in the wrong way. So people started to add uh, vocabulary URL, not, uh, not uh, selecting uh, pointers to um, front page of vocabulary, like it was designed, but they started to put term URL. And that's something uh, we're going to fix. So we, we are proposing changes in, in the uh, default metadata schema. So hopefully it will be all four fields or, after, uh, or it will be improved in other way. And Jim is going to show you all possibilities. So this is configuration and uh, just I, I just need to tell a few words uh, about this uh, implementation. So we really tried to put all the functionality outside of Dataverse and it's implemented in JavaScript. So basically here you can see uh, we're using a CVVOC URL, which is pointing to a Cosmos instance and also language is mentioned here and a vocabulary name. And uh, we're also defining protocols. So our default protocol is Cosmos, but uh, we also uh, let, uh, we're basically given possibility to uh, communities to define their own protocol and it should work. So it's going to be really universal solution. And of course, um, vocabulary URL itself that will be filled in metadata. So uh, this uh, approach is very flexible and it could be also reusable for other data repositories, not only for Dataverse. 
And JavaScript interface is uh, very simple. So it's basically, um, you can see it, it's a few lines of JavaScript. And if you have uh, some uh, control vocabulary, which is not Cosmos, you can just simply implement this kind of interface connected to Dataverse, uh, define and configuration your location, and after it will work. We tested uh, this ORCID, we tested this uh, few other um, endpoints, and uh, it works. Again, um, in some cases, like uh, for Harvard Dataverse, we already have a lot of um, pre-filled metadata with uh, links to uh, external control vocabularies. And uh, Cosmos has functionality basically to query it with Python uh, module, and uh, you can get back a term URI that could be filled in metadata. And uh, this is really important because you can also use some deep learning or machine learning, and you can predict which, to which uh, term URIs you can uh, basically uh, create links in metadata and do it automatically or semi automatically. So there are a lot of Cosmos uh, instances, and it's emerging in Europe, and hopefully it will be uh, also uh, taken by, by um, well, Harvard and uh, worldwide. So you can find the list here. And also we started uh, to uh, talk to other partners to implement Cosmos protocol as, as a default protocol. And uh, hopefully uh, it will give us an opportunity to connect Dataverse to any kind of uh, API endpoints uh, with control vocabularies. So again, uh, we are trying to do everything in the collaboration. It's not something, uh, so we are trying to share all functionality and all features. We are collecting all feedbacks, but our work actually is to make it as, as generic as possible. And uh, there is also consensus proposal in the external control vocabulary working group. And uh, you can find links here. And also we created pull request. And what happened, uh, Jim Myers from GDC, he started to reuse this functionality and he managed to uh, uh, connect to other uh, interesting con control vocabularies. So Jim, from this uh, uh, slide, you can continue, I think. Okay, wait, yeah. screen share and... Uh... Oh, okay, I, I just need to disconnect, right? I, I, I think I disconnected you, does that work? Okay, thanks. <laughs> Let me move my chat here. All right, so can you see the slide there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe first a, qu a quick question uh, to to Slava because this has nothing to do with the, with the flexible support. Uh, uh, Peter Kirali uh, asked. I I just saw mentioning Mark twenty one in a slide. What is the relation between Mark twenty one and Dataverse? Well, there is no uh, direct relationships, uh, relationship, but uh, of course we want uh, to uh, make generic solution that will allow to uh, convert to different um, uh, metadata schemas and uh, to different different standards. So this approach, uh, when we will have uh, turn your eyes, of course, it could be also integrated in in Mark Twenty One. Uh, I think that the other questions. I, we, leave, we leave after the presentation. Okay. Okay. Um, so thanks. Let, let me kind of keep going from where Slava left off. Um, just my, my first slide here, just want to point out um, for, for my participation here, uh, I'm primarily involved through the GDCC, right? I'm, I'm an independent contractor, but I'm working through GDCC for um, for community uh, programming design efforts and so on. Um, QDR is up here as well because I also work with QDR directly and they were the source of some of the original uh, ORCID integrations that I'll be showing. Um, so we've got those two things together. Um, the, the thing I'd like to talk about is I think, you know, we, we had the discussion last summer, um, Slava uh, and colleagues at Don's produced the, the PR uh, kind of at the state that you, he has been showing you. And then we started ramping up the metadata working groups and we had four meetings from December through April that kind of looked back through the existing issues um, and other requests that we've had over the over time for how uh, controlled vocabulary should work. Uh, we looked through what Don's had done um, that you've just heard about. Uh, I, I was at that time also showed off in these meetings how um, QDR integrated ORCID. Um, and same same sort of thing with with some differences in design under the hood in terms of uh, trying to connect ORCID to a, a single field rather than four. 
um, and th things like that. I won't, won't go back through the whole history, but th those discussions in the metadata working group kind of went through, you know, how does this work? Is this going to work only for SCOSMOS or how do we make it work for other um, reposit uh, other services? Um, how do we minimize, you know, what Dataverse has to know internally about individual services? Can we sort of maximize the, minimize the coupling with Dataverse as well as uh, are there ways to make these scripts sort of reusable either as is or with very light modifications, even with other repositories, ho hoping that, you know, ORCID might, might uh, maintain the script for ORCID long-term and not have to have it become another thing that Dataverse and the community have to maintain. Um, we talked about, you know, backwards compatibility with existing metadata blocks. And you, you, you've heard the issue that Slava brought up with the, the keyword and topic fields don't actually have a term URI field yet um, that, that they're probably going to need. Um, but, you know, for new things, if we're just recording a, a you know, ORCID or an organization or a sample number or something, uh, you know, can we do it with one field as well? Um, how do we get all of this stuff that's sort of in the front end to display also into search, into the metadata exports, into archival, um, you know, copies of the data, those sorts of things. And then can we all do this with performance and so on? So um, through that process, um, you know, it sort of had its bumps and starts, um, but we, we basically came up with a, a consensus around kind of having g generic scripts on the front end that manage the input and display um, that the, um, you know, and, and sort of trying to limit Dataverse to essentially annotating its input and display so that the scripts can work off of them and do something magic um, that, that I'll, I'll show you in a demo in a second, um, you know, to display useful information about the terms or let you select terms. Um, and, and then kind of using an internal table um, so that once we record something like, you know, for example, a, an ORCID or a, a term from one of these vocabularies, um, rather than recording the term name every time somebody enters it in a Dataverse, uh, you know, into a form the same way we do now for the internal stuff, could we just have one copy, right? That this is a standard term, so we can, can we capture it once and not have the, the data repeated uh, inside Dataverse everywhere? Um, so I, I will demo in a second um, where we got to essentially about three, four weeks ago, um, I started trying to, to really take off on the, um, uh, what the metadata working groups had come out with um, and starting from Slava's branch and kind of updating. And so what, what I'll show you here in a second is we now actually have three service specific JavaScripts, SCOSMOS. Um, we have one for ORCID. <clears throat> and then uh, I think about a week or a week and a half ago, <clears throat> excuse me, we, uh, we told uh, Australia, boy, I'm losing my voice here. <clears throat> We, we told Australia about a week or a week and a half ago um, that this should be easy to write a JavaScript. And so um, it's not complete, but we have a proof of concept one uh, bouncing off of the ARDC services from Australia as well. Um, the, the idea is basically that the, the scripts do the interactions with the remote services. There's a configuration that, that's uh, JSON that, that basically tells Dataverse how these individual services should get mapped to specific fields from the site from the metadata blocks. Um, and then the Dataverse software uses that configuration to annotate, um, ba basically put attributes on the input and display elements in the, in, the, in the HTML that comes out so that the scripts can pick up and look at that HTML. Um, so again, any other application in the world is gonna produce HTML if they can produce the same at attributes um, that they could use the scripts as is. Um, the discussions back and forth again have been between sort of single field and compound. Um, the demo shows you how both of those will work um, in, in what we've got going here. Um, you can have one or more vocabularies from the same service at this point. Um, you can have services that allow both uh, choosing a, a term as well as just putting in free text. So if you wanted to support keywords from a vocabulary or additional ones that a user just types in, um, that's allowed as well. Um, there's also sort of not so visible in the demo, the external vocabulary value table is storing uh, copies of, of this information from the services. And um, I can show you that that, that, that actually goes to uh, populate search and the export formats. Um, and that does so with all of the internationalization going on. So if the service actually gives us back multiple languages, um, search indexes the terms in all those languages that are there. 
All right, so switching over to the demo, this is just a, a, a shout out to, uh, to uh, Don and others who have made the Ansible stuff. This is an EC2 instance that just spun up from the branch uh, and then configured from there. Um, this is a Dataverse data set. There's metadata um, for the demo. I've created a separate block that has some fields so I didn't have to mess with, with any of the existing stuff in the citation block. Um, and you can see basically here's the ARDC uh, topic. They've got fields of research information. I picked signal processing out of their uh, uh, 2020 version of their vocabulary. Uh, here's a uh, uh, SCOSMOS uh, coming from the AgroVac um, uh, uh, vocabulary. Uh, ORCID um, and uh, SCOSMOS, uh, again, uh, this is showing things both from the UNESCO thesaurus and the AgroVac. Um, the, the display side of this is essentially these things, instead of showing you the URL itself, um, they're, they're uh, the words from the term, uh, they show the vocabulary if, if it's available, and if you click on them, um, you know, you go off to here's what Australia says about the signal processing terms. Uh, same thing with the, this goes, you know, since my email is public from ORCID, it shows that um, the thing is a link to my ORCID page. Um, these are all, again, they, they link off to the, uh, the uh, uh, appropriate term pages and so on. On the input side, um, you just go over and um, you get something more like this. Um, you can say, um, you know, I, I don't want uh, this or I'll just go do it again, right? I, I, uh, if you have multiple vocabulary set up for a field, you pick the vocabulary and you start typing. Um, and my abalone culture is one of the things that are, exists in there. Um, for ORCID, um, this, this adding fields is just standard stuff for Dataverse to add another person. Um, the one thing I wanna do with ORCID is just point out that uh, ORCID uh, kind of tied to the questions that we got. ORCID is something where um, not only can you type for the name, but because they've indexed all sorts of other things, you can say, I know um, I know uh, Slava who's involved in the Corona Y project. And if I've typed that right, I thought Slava would come up here. Where is he? Um, there he is. Um, so I can actually pick Slava by knowing other things about him than his last name or, or other stuff because ORCID in their API has, has indexed that information. So services can be very complex if they know narrow and broader terms. You could, you could have a widget that, um, that allows you to go through that. If there's AI or, or machine learning or anything, you can do that as well. Um, the last thing I'll show is just uh, with this Cosmos, this, this field has been set up for just using only the uh, UNESCO thesaurus. So rather than popping up a, a vocabulary entry here, um, it only does the terms directly. Um, and I can select, you know, by typing test, there's the uh, UNESCO term for testing. Um, and this one I've set up so that I can actually say, uh, you know, here's something novel. Um, and this is there, there is no term in, in uh, the UNESCO thesaurus for that, so that's just plain text. If I save those changes, we go back to uh, looking at the metadata, and you'll see all of this stuff is now updated. Um, Slava's there as a new link. Um, testing is in there as a link. Something novel is just text because that was free text. So I, I think this stuff is all, you know, basically uh, uh, PR already um, hasn't been reviewed and completely tested, but um, is all together. Uh, the last thing I'll show is just that, you know, these things then show up in uh, both the JSON and OAI ORE exports, which are the two exports that actually uh, pick up all the custom fields without more work. Uh, and I'll just show this one again to kind of quickly highlight it. I don't want to show you a lot of stuff here, but um, uh, because these things are multilingual, um, these are actually picking up all the different uh, um, terms and term names from those different languages uh, and putting them in the outputs rather than just having uh, a single, uh, th this is sort of the old style, there's only the, uh, the English term in there um, from the internal ones. Um, the last thing I'll show is just again to, to prove that it's working, these things are all set up with search. Um, that's the uh, part of the Russian word for testing. Um, and because that's in there, um, we're picking that up uh, through the search as well. So that's the demo. Um, one last slide, um, if I can find my presentation again. Um, 
So at this point, I think, you know, with, with the work here, um, starting from what Slav has had and the, the work I've been able to put in over the last three weeks, we've, we've got something that I think is sort of um, pull request ready, um, needs a little bit of cleanup. Um, we'll, we'll need to go through the process of testing and so on, but we hope that, you know, we've got something that can kind of get out uh, uh, fairly quickly to the community at this point in the next version or two of Dataverse. Um, It'll, there, there are some limitations. Um, it, it doesn't handle the topics and keywords fields, but on, only because those don't have a term URI yet. So I think as part of this, we'll suggest um, adding the, uh, the term URI as a fourth child in those fields so that you'd be able to hook up to those. <clears throat> Um, if you've got fields like keyword that you want to have um, vocabularies from different services, that's not going to work yet. They all have to be the same thing. But if, if you can use, like Slava has shown, uh, getting Skosmos to, uh, to serve all the vocabularies you want, you'd, you'd be able to do multiple vocabularies that way. Um, th there's lots of challenges. Um, you know, th th there's sort of room for things to improve over time here. Um, exactly what we store from the URIs. Um, it, you know, what, what is it that we should have and sort of even philosophically, how, how much should we be archiving of all the things that Scosmos knows about a term? Um, you know, do we want more than, do we want to know the narrow and broader terms that were available at that time and put that into all the export formats and the archival formats or not? Um, so I, I think we've got just some decisions to make. We've, we've got in this PR, you know, basic stuff, it's in there now. Um, that there's enough to get you the labels and things. So it's a little bit human readable um, and we can kind of go from there. Um, the opportunities that exist as soon as this thing is in, basically, um, you know, writing a JavaScript, uh, as Slava said, is fairly lightweight. So other PID services, if you've got sample IDs or research organizations or anything, um, we should be able to, and, and those things have an API, we should be able to write up a JavaScript fairly quickly and, and get those added in as well. Um, those are things that can live outside in the community and, and the configuration just references them that they, they don't need to go through a PR process to get into Dataverse. Um, there are a lot of things like I, I didn't show in the demo, but um, with ARDC, for example, um, their, their vocabularies, I, I guess, like the UNESCO thesaurus, right, they're hierarchical, they've got chemistry and then sub areas of chemistry and so on and all the same for other fields of science. Um, there's nothing that stops you from having a JavaScript that shows much more of a, of a hierarchical uh, version of that rather than a simple pick list. Um, so those sorts of, of incremental improvements in the scripts would be easy to do. Um, and then lastly, that there are a lot of research directions and this is sort of a hand back to, uh, to Slava, but you know, one of the challenges for this on the Dataverse side, especially on the search and the, the archival side is that all of these services you know, that their native output of JSON or JSON LD is not all the same. And so um, if we really want to support the search and export for a lot of these services, it would be nice if there were something harmonizing what we're seeing from all of them, um, you know, maybe some sort of proxy service and get that outside of Dataverse. Um, same thing, how we put stuff into these metadata exports, if we could start thinking about how to, how to make Dataverse less of a, you know, Dataverse will record the URI and what you want to do with that URI either for archival or for metadata exports. If that were, if that were something that were an external service or services, it might be uh, more, more easy and flexible to deal with over time. Um, so I think that's it for me. Um, I'll try and uh, turn my screen sharing off and hand it back to Slava. Okay, thanks, Jim. I really hope that you like it. Oh, one second, I need to share it back. Okay, can you see it again? Yep. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, so now, um, yeah, I'm going to tell you something about known issues. Ooh. I don't know what's going on here. So uh, what we discovered after we started implementation uh, is quite uh, quite a lot of topics that we have to rethink. And uh, so here you can see uh, not complete list, but the most important issues like how uh, control vocabulary support could be applied to any field, uh, how to support any available vocabulary, how to uh, sustain back, back, backward compatibility with fields uh, from old metadata schema, uh, UI experience, and can we use non-managed non vocabularies of free text values, and of course, concept drift and interoperability across all Dataverse instances. That's something I also want to uh, talk in five minutes. 
So like first question, how uh, control vocabulary support could be applied to any field. Don't worry. So we already have solutions. So if you have some um, field that you want to, uh, to uh, link to some control vocabulary, it's really easy to add one extra field in metadata schema and TCV file and uh, just provide a few rules that this is uh, from external control vocabulary support and it will work. So this functionality is already implemented. However, if you don't want to break uh, your metadata schema, uh, let's say a citation block, you can also add a extra block and you can define some keywords there. So basically it could be also searchable through web interface. And of course uh, it will be exposed in metadata. So you will get your turn your eyes also in linked open data cloud. So another question about support of any available vocabulary. So currently, of course, uh, we have support of uh, ORCIDs, Cosmos, and uh, a few other frameworks. But uh, well, it's uh, really universal solution. And I uh, already mentioned that we try to make it as generic as possible. So basically, this implementation is a widget that could be integrated in any kind of uh, data repository or even in annotation tools like Hypothesis. So people searching for something, they can link to some uh, concepts and this information could be exposed as uh, uh, linked open data. So we already have quite interesting prototypes. Of course, backward compatibility because we have quite some terms in hardware data world. So now we have to uh, think about plans, how we're going to migrate um, hardware data world and other data sources from the network. However, uh, it's not a problem uh, for our implementation. We can also leave, uh, uh, we, we can also create field uh, term URL, which is uh, empty. And after we can force people, uh, depositors, uh, to fill it with appropriate uh, term URLs. Yeah, so clean uh, user interface uh, and uh, Jim re uh, did really a great job on improvement of uh, user interface. So um, it's not only Cosmos, but, but um, we have uh, um, proven concepts that could be connected to uh, different uh, control vocabularies in really easy way. And people can understand that uh, they can get more information in metadata. So non-managed vocabularies of free text values, that's also covered by a solution that uh, Jim presented. And of course, uh, for non-managed managed control vocabularies, it's quite difficult topic because it's not what we want, but at least it's possible with current implementation. And uh, how to ensure that control vocabulary is coming from authoritative source. And uh, we understand that this is quite a difficult topic as well. And uh, only administrators are responsible uh, that will connect to authoritative sources. But of course, it could be a serious issue if uh, services will move, like Cosmos will move from one organization to another organization, and we have to change some configuration and URLs. So we need to think about some mirrors and uh, other stuff that should be implemented. Concept drift. And this is very a tough topic for us because, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, Wikidata and uh, other anthologies, uh, they are getting updated uh, mostly on daily basis. So basically, it means that if you uh, if you want to uh, export metadata uh, uh, with COVID-19 as a concept, you should go back in time. You should uh, find JSON that uh, uh, was existent at the moment when a data set, a data set was created and put this information, not current uh, concept description. So we're also uh, working on solution to cover this issue. And uh, we're basically uh, thinking about a common service that uh, every uh, data repository, not all, even Dataverse can use. And uh, it should also support Memento protocol, which will allow to go back in time and uh, get appropriate uh, uh, caches. So interoperability across all data were synthesis. Uh, yeah, this is quite <laughs> quite a topic as well because uh, Harvard data versus harvesting uh, metadata from uh, all um, data sources and uh, how to make it uh, more standard in, in more standardized way. We have to uh, think about also. However, because uh, we are linking term URIs, so when metadata schema will be not um, standardized, uh, we can also show some term URIs. Yeah, no problem, it's possible. 
So uh, that's some required development for the sustainability. And uh, Jim already showed you prototype. And uh, we, like already mentioned, we started to work uh, with other communities, basically uh, on on the external service that will uh, implement all this functionality. So just to finish, uh, we used serverless, and it's deployed as Lambda function on Harvard AVS. And uh, this small proof of concepts concept allows to archive uh, um, concepts from uh, Wikidata and from uh, Mesh, and hopefully uh, from uh, Cosmos and uh, other uh, anthologies. So basically, it works, and you can test it, and you can deploy on Harvard. Uh, or not but uh, Amazon AWS cloud. So just last slide, uh, this is how it looks like. So we're getting uh, some JSON from Wikidata and Mesh, and uh, we are able to, to put um, concepts um, in, in database or also archive in, in centralized service. So everybody can access those concepts and uh, use it. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Slava and, uh, and Jim, for uh, your interesting talks. Uh, there are a lot of questions. I think some of them are already uh, answered, but I try to um, go back to the first one. Um, just, I'm sorry, I something went wrong. Um, Mary, qu quickly while you're you're doing that. Yeah. I, I forgot one thing that I wanted to show in the demo. So I've just popped my screen back up quickly. Um, all, all I did here is basically take things and turn off the configuration to use external things. And I, I just wanted to show that when you do that, um, these are really just normal uh, fields. So um, D Dorothea was asking in the chat about uh, uh, have we solved the problem of, of dealing with multiple fields looking uh, you know, a little bit goofy uh, for internal fields. No, we haven't, but we hide it with the JavaScript. Um, so you can see basically single field, uh, multiple field things here. And, and again, if I jump over to the to the add form, you can see that hiding underneath this ARDC was a four field one, the CVOC demo was four fields, but the other ones were single fields. So in, in terms of interoperability, as, as um, Slava was saying, Right, the, the JavaScripts make it easy to enter and to uh, display these things, but underneath we haven't changed anything from the TSV file from the from the metadata blocks being used. So this stuff still, if somebody else uses different vocabularies, this is still something that can be transferred and, and harvested across pretty easily. Okay, that was it. Thanks. Thank you. Um, there's a there's a question from Roxanne. Uh, is this available? Uh, is the information about this available online? It's 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 on GitHub. You mentioned you in your slide. I I I, I thought yeah, um, yeah. Our developments already uh, published on GitHub, and you can try it. Yeah, and that there's a there's a new um, pull request with all the the updates that I have that that's on there as well. So. The, 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 the branches are out there. The pull requests are basically, if you want to take a look at the difference between the, the current Dataverse code and what's in the branch, right? The pull request is better to look at. Otherwise, you can just go direct to the branch and run it. And, and again, Don, Don's Ansible script is an easy way to fire up one of these things on, on EC2 without doing much work at all. And there's one thing that's, that's not a question, but uh... Stian is, is saying that language is a strong argument for using qualified vocabulary terms. So uh, yeah, the 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 the, the, the sign po uh, Slava combination is, is is thinking a very good uh, approach. And I also think that WebLate is a perfect combination also with uh, Cosmos and uh, other tools, because in WebLate you can create uh, multilingual interfaces and uh, you can also expose as link data. So this is something for future to consider how we can go uh, from uh, WebLate to SCOS and up to Cosmos. And I think that there was a question from from Paul about uh, um, could the Dataverse search connect to Cosmos to do a query expansion on a search, but 
Jim already uh, showed that in his uh, in his um, presentation, and um, Amber asked, "Can this be used to implement standards like ISO 9015?" Geospatial metadata with nested elements structured based on XML. I, I think it's universal enough to to be uh, implemented in any kind of, uh, to support any kind of standard. The, the I mean I think that the one requirement that we have at this point is well and and it's sort of a requirement right as we're talking about a term URI. Um, so really that doesn't necessarily need to be a term URI. If you're looking at XML, if the only way to define that term is essentially an XML path down through a document, that could potentially be what's stored. Um, so I think you could support XML oriented schemas that way. Um, I, 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 essentially, again, the, the, right as far as Dataverse knows, it's storing text, which it's only the JavaScript that understands that's really an identifier of some sort. So as long as the JavaScript is able to handle, you know, XML path looking through something, I think you could you could extend it and, and use it with those sorts of things. And oh. maybe, are you are you gone, Jim? Or I'm sorry. No, no I, I was I was sort of going to switch topic and just point out that that um, all of the the questions that came in beforehand, um, I tried to enter uh, answers for. So in the notes document, there's actually a lot of uh, answers um, fr from everything that was uh, requested early on. Yeah. And uh, what I forgot to mention, so now we, we are talking about metadata layer, but we, we can also consider uh, tools that developed by a scholars portal, High Ember, and we want to use uh, also this functionality on data level to make links to controller templates. So that's something yeah. for, for the future to consider. Right. Yeah, we, we've, um, right, we've talked, I, I talk about this mostly as a JavaScript, you know, if somebody else with a different kind of repository wants to be able to use these JavaScripts that we can do it. But um, we have external tools, um, like the one Slava just mentioned, as well as previewers and so on. And any of those that want to show metadata, right, all, all they have to do is essentially include the script and, and add an annotation to the page to say, hey, script, look here and change this and the script, the same scripts would work. So we, we might actually be able to use them throughout the sort of Dataverse ecosystem uh, as well, just because we, we tried to make it so that everybody else could use them as well. Uh, a lot of questions. I have to choose a couple of. Um, there's, a, there's a question of Dorothea, how how have you implemented the display built from different subfields? In other words, is issue 7856 already done? Yeah, that, that, that was what I was trying to, to show uh, in that last little bit of demo is that um, when, when we have four fields in Dataverse, <clears throat> if you, the, the, um, the internal stuff, if you have those four fields, the, the display is always a concatenation of those four fields and you, you can do a little bit of formatting with them, but you can't do the kinds of things I was showing off of, you know, having your, your name show up without showing you your ORCID or the ID, making it a direct link. Um, so that the issue that she referenced is one that, that for the internal stuff, they're trying to think about ways to extend the, the, uh, the language that Dataverse has for, for metadata blocks to allow you to do formatting across the multiple subfields. And essentially we don't solve that here, but we sidestep it because we basically have the JavaScript saying, I know what that term URI is. I can go out and get all the information and I'll display my own widgets, which are much nicer looking than, than, the, than, than what we've got from the internal vocabularies. Yeah, and I just wanted to elaborate that uh, we're also talking about multi-licenses support. And uh, we did some experiments uh, with SPDX uh, database uh, consisting of li all licenses we managed to uh, put in SCOS and uh, after it went to Cosmos. So basically there is also possibility to use this control vocabulary functionality to fill um, yeah, yeah, to, 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 to create links to uh, licenses. If they have um, term URI. Um. I'm sorry. Um, there's a lot of there are a lot of 
comments in, instead of questions. So I try to to uh, to 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 filter out the questions. Um, just just an, an, an a question of uh, or a comment of uh, uh, Stephen with a, a reply of. I think someone else is about. Um, oh no, there was a question of John uh, Grable about uh, authoritative sources, and uh, is is John? Is this? Would you like to hear more about it, or is this uh, already answered by, by Stephen? Um, <clears throat> it was uh, hinted at answered. Uh, the. Uh, I think all the philosophical issues that you raised in individual slides, I, I got a little um, uh, stuck on because I've thought about them a lot, but for authoritative sources, for example, um, it, for me, the, the quote obvious answer is the URL, if, if the IRI is um, in fact, uh, uh, looks like a URL and, and maybe could be resolvable, then an authority is represented by the fact there was a domain name involved that presumably, you know, has some ownership and management. Um, and so I guess I'm not entirely understanding exactly what problem you're trying to solve there. And, and um, I think the, the, yeah, go. <laughs> the, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 get, I get your point. I, the, the, the trick that, um, makes this a problem here is, is essentially that, um, you know, what, what Scosmos is able to do is actually be a proxy that, that gives us nicely formatted JSON LD that we already know what we're going to get about terms that are from somewhere else. So for example, the, the UNESCO thesaurus, the term URI goes to one website, but we're actually talking, you know, in this demo, I think it was the Finnish Scosmos server um, to get the metadata. Mm -hmm. And so the, mm -hmm. the question is more sort of a management one of, you know, the, does everybody run their own Scosmos server with their favorite right. vocabularies? Do we get one per the community or can we really go back and, you know, convince the UNESCO thesaurus people that they should be putting out Jason that's nice enough for us to just go there because they're the authority on this, right? And we, we shouldn't be kind of proxying and, and, you know, it's less of a technical issue than it is sort of a, how do we manage mm -hmm. that well? Yes, good. That, that's helpful because it goes to another point that was made in the in the questions in the chat about the IRIs. Um, sorry about the versioning, um, which which we're uh, uh, challenged with in the Cedar BioPortal combination as well. Which is, as you get multiple um, Scosmoses, uh, if you don't know which one was used as the source of the IRI, um, then you are not sure which version was being served at that time in that system. And there's the possibility that they can get out of sync if the IRIs don't actually contain versioning information, which is true for 95% of the, of the repositories. And, and so I, I don't, um, I, I think that's not solvable without defining rules for a controlled environment, <laughs> a controlled semantic mm -hmm. environment that you stay within. Um, is my conclusion, but it'd be really good to talk about those questions further, because I think a number of us are struggling with it. Yeah, it, this this is definitely something that we'll, we'll continue on with the, the working groups, I think, for some of these, you know, ki kinds of questions, at, at least in the Dataverse context, so it'd be great to mm -hmm. follow there. Um, the, the one thing that, that this, we, we really are with this PR, sort of where we are now, is we're, we're assuming that that the URI is is stable, but because we actually are going back to the individual service to get the extra information, if, if it does have versioning mm -hmm, info, mm -hmm. right, we, we do have a little bit of information about where it came from and when uh, in there. So we you know, sort of done a reasonable job, but we can do, do better in the future. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, many questions. Good, thank you. I, I see one someone who raised his hand. I can't see the name, but I invite- It's, it's Steve, it's Steve, Marion. Um, huh. I mean, yeah, this is why I sort of in the chat talked about authority and you know and and, and what we actually mean by authoritative here. I think that question and that that and the point that um, Jim was alluding to is actually about well, you know, 
under whose authority you know under whose authority is this um and you know how was that released it, there's actually the origins of this that the the ADC stuff that um uh, Jim pointed to was uh, it's hey the, the origin of this in Australia is we've been wanting to use our national statistical officers control vocabularies for years and we wanted them to say this is our agreed approach to doing this and they wouldn't do it you know so it's like we want to use it and we want you to demonstrate you are the authority on this but you have to provide such a service and so I say that was nothing you know technically it could you know it could easily be done but what's what is the relevant stamp of authority that's there and this is you know that's the dynamics of you know between uh, technically how do i do this and you know from a governance point of view under whose authority is that actually published and be able to distinguish those two things uh, and and bring those two things together so and i think that the, the different conversations in the chat kind of reflect some of the the thinking you know and the active thinking around that so yeah as i keen to talk more on that one um are there other questions i think almost every question is is answered in the chat or uh the other way around uh so please raise your hand if you have any uh, question you would like to uh to raise and that can be answered um now by the presenters or maybe i over so that's i see see philip please philip go ahead yeah, I, I, I'm, I can't remember if this was um, covered already, but um, what kind of um, fields will support controlled uh, vocabularies? What kind of metadata fields in, in, in Dataverse? Is it only the keywords or, or it, is it other fields yeah. also? The, the, the configuration is for any field. Um, so, so again, the, the, the trick is that the metadata blocks as defined by the TSV files, right, aren't except for adding a term URI for the keyword and topic fields, we're not talking about changing anything uh, there. So, so essentially you can point to either a, a compound field or a single value field and say, I would like, you know, Scosmos to manage this with these vocabularies, or I would like to make this one managed by the ORCID script. And so it'll, it'll be people with ORCIDs. Um, so you can, you can, you know, if you want a new field that doesn't exist, like for sample number, um, right, that would have to be a, a new TSV block for, for biology that, that has that field. Um, but using that standard block, right, if, if we do it, what you're suggesting that that's standardized across Dataverse and you use the standard block, if you decide that that should be a, a, a sample ID for that field and you're only going to accept URIs for that for a certain sample ID in that field on your instance, you can configure to have that field managed, you know, by that script and, and have that vocabulary there. Yeah, thanks. Uh, Are there other people who would like to raise a question or an issue? Well, one quick pitch I'll put in is just be, because these JavaScripts, you know, I think the the two parts of the expertise you need are one knowing how the script is supposed to work and the other side is knowing the the api of the service so if there are people in the community who know the api for a service for whatever kind of identifier or vocabulary um, you know I, I i we would be happy to collaborate to to give you the expertise on the other side because really the the hardest part for me to go out and do a new one would be to go and learn about the uri of the service that we need to do so um, and, and vice versa, I think, you know, I, I know the internals of the script because we've just been playing with them, so. Yeah, and if there are no other questions, um, maybe maybe uh, uh, Jim or uh, Philip, you, you can uh, elaborate a little bit more on the uh, interest the data for interest group about metadata because probably there are some people who are new in the community and they don't know of this interest group and maybe they would like to join because this is not this is only one half one hour and a half discussion but this discussion will be follow up in this interest group yeah jim please go ahead um okay so so we have we started off with a general sort of metadata working group and the the main ways all of these working groups are working is uh, both through we have meetings um, uh, occasionally on Thursdays, we have a reserve slot uh, for, for a given time. Um, 
but uh, and then we use them sort of on the weeks where people have a topic. Um, the other thing is we have the Slack uh, for the community that has uh, channels for the different interest groups. And I think with this one, we started out with sort of one metadata working group, and then we spun out things like specifically controlled vocabularies, um, things related to DDI and the next standards that, that uh, Steve has mentioned in chat and so on is another subgroup. So you can join those appropriate subgroups and kind of have an ongoing conversation in Slack. Um, we'll announce in Slack uh, uh, when, when we have meetings on particular topics. Um, there's a Google Doc that I think is linked in the Slack that, that points to the meeting minutes from the meetings that I, I pointed to. So the kinds of notes that you're seeing from this meeting we, we have for all the past meetings of that working group. Um, and again, we're very open for, for people who are just, you know, sh share the interest and want to know what's going on and get some help with, with uh, you know, using this stuff, as well as people who are really think of the design level. I think it's completely open as to, you know, to come, come and join and, and uh, we'll, we'll try and, uh, you know, make, make the best use of, of our time together. So thank you. And there are a couple of minutes to, to, to ask your last questions or uh, explanation about what you have heard uh, today. Um, someone would like to ask a question. I don't uh, see. I can't find my hand, so I'll just oh, speak. Oh, John. <laughs> John. <laughs> John, yes. Uh, I, I'm finding it interesting to think about the parallels in what I was presenting on, with Cedar and Bioportal <clears throat> versus what, to some extent, you all have already been thinking about designing, implementing in Dataverse um, and, and Dataverse uh, auxiliary services, if that's the right way to say it. Um, and I'm wondering if any of you, as you thought about it or um, uh, heard those presentations, um, have a way to capture or uh, think about how these things potentially align, could be combined, are, and I realize that's a complicated uh, question, but just in very broad terms, are these two different solutions to the same issues, or are they potentially overlapping or merging issues um, or complementary uh, solutions? Any thoughts? I, I would guess they're not they're not sort of completely separate. I, I think I need to mm -hmm. learn more um, to, to figure mm -hmm. out where they they complement or combine. But um, mm -hmm. you know, some the broader issue of metadata in, in DataVerse again that the we have metadata blocks which the that they do nice things for for formatting and telling you which you know what kind of field is text, what's a date, what's what's a URL, those sorts of things, whether it's controlled or not. Um, but if you may have heard in the discussion, you know, if you want new fields, you have to create a new uh, metadata block. Um, and th there, are mm -hmm. other, there are other fun issues of, you know, if your biology schema has a name for title and author and so on, we've already got that in a different metadata block. How do we manage all of that? Um, right. and so, I, so I think that there, there are certainly open issues that I, I think I see starting to be uh, you know, managed in Cedar that that we don't have solutions for. So it would definitely be fun to to kind of figure out, you know, you know what, what, what we might be able to share back and forth. Yeah, yeah also, thank you. I also wanted to elaborate on that. So we have a request actually to implement support for uh, bioontology portal. So <laughs> it's, 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 so we'll be talking. <laughs> yeah, so it's in Dutch project called Claria and uh, Claria is busy with link data and semantic web solutions. So definitely we have a lot of uh, common interest and uh, we should talk right. Great. about collaboration. Yeah. Sounds, sounds wonderful. So thank you. Uh, thank you to the audience, uh, to everyone uh, who, who took, made the time to, to, to join this session and uh, very much many thanks to uh, Philip, Jim, John and Slava for presenting uh, um, their thoughts, their ideas, and their new developments uh, about metadata and controlled vocabularies. Thank you. It's now uh, a quarter past five in the Netherlands. It's not a, in another time zone. It's another uh, uh, time. It's a quarter past hour, and uh, 
we will we have to close this uh, this session thank you bye thanks bye bye bye